Hey guys, Hello, mate. welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be taking you through a video that you have all been asking me for for so long. How to zero gap your clippers. Now, before we go any further, I need you guys to do me one favor. Click subscribe. And now, let's go! <laughs> Yeah, and it's slider cuts. Come on, come on. S to the L to the I to the D to the E to the R to the Cuts, I'm doing all right. All right, guys. When you're about to adjust your clippers, you only need one tool. Screwdriver. And a screwdriver that actually fits the size of the clipper you're adjusting. Because different clippers have different sizes and different screwdrivers and different heads. So just figure out which one your clipper has and you only need that. These are the clippers I'll be adjusting today the wall detailer and the wall senior. Now, all wall clippers use the same head and they adjust the same way. So once you have adjusted the wall detailer, then any shape up clipper in the wall selection is exactly the same way. And once you have adjusted the wall senior, then any other clipper like the wall senior corded one, super taper, all of them magic clips, all of them adjust exactly the same way. So I only need to show you how to adjust one of the, like the cutting hair clippers and one of the shape up clippers and you will know how to do them all. All right, first of all, I'm gonna show you how to adjust your blades on your wall detailer. Very simple. Just fully unscrew both of the screws at the back of the blade. These screws can be very fiddly, so make sure you put them down somewhere safe. Lucky I've got grooves here, so they're not rolling away anywhere. If you speak to any barbers, they've all got stories about screws they have lost. I have lost plenty. So make sure, if, whoa, see, they just go everywhere. So make sure like this, you've got grooves or you've got some type of cup and you put them aside. Now, this screwdriver works on the blades inside, but also you can also use a flat head if you like, but this works. Just showing you guys. But if you like, you can also use a flat head. But as I said in the beginning, you only really need this because it works. Now, if you see, I have, I'm going to like fully, fully and adjust my, my blades. So look. Now, I don't know if you can see clearly on the camera, but can you see that the bottom blade is fully apart from the top blade? If you ever buy a blade or a new clipper, the blades always come apart. They're never zero gaps. Sometimes even wider than this. If you can see clearly, this blade here, because it comes like two blades that join together, is lower than the back blade. Now, if you want to zero gap your clippers, what you want to do is you want it to meet at a point. So these two blades should be meeting at an even point. I'm going to show you two ways to adjust your blades. So if you look guys clearly, can you see that this blade is lower than the back blade? I put it, I have pulled it apart so that you can see it more clearly. Now some people are happy to cut with their clippers like that, but I often get asked, how does my clippers cut so finely, so sharp, so smooth? And it's because I zero gap them. Now, the first method of adjusting your clippers is this. Loosen the screws, and I always say loosen it by about 45 degrees, which is like half of a quarter. It's not like half a quarter, it's half a quarter. That's it, literally, just a little bit. Both sides. Just a little bit. So now there's movement. See, can you see the blades moving? See, can you see that? Is that clear? Now, for me, the blades are even moving too freely. So I'm gonna tighten it a little bit because when I'm adjusting my blades, I like a bit of friction. So maybe even less than 45 degrees. Maybe more like 20 degrees. 
You just want it to be loosened to the point that you can move the blades, but you don't want them moving so freely, like just like loosely. Now, the first technique is this. You get a flat surface, the blades on that surface, and you push down on both sides. So right now, I'm pushing down with my right hand on the back blade, and with my left hand, I'm pushing on the front blade. And now I'm gonna take my right thumb, and hold it like that. Because if you're pushing down on both of them on a flat surface, they should be meeting at an even point. And then you're going to have to tighten it in this position. So if you look at it now, it's pretty even, but I've never been fully happy with this technique because I've always found that it still overlaps just a little bit every time I've done this. But if you look at it and I separate them, it is pretty even. Although I can see that this front blade is overlapping just a little bit, ever so slightly. But what you can do from here, which is the second technique, is by eye. Loosen one side at a time. Just a little bit. And then you go to the side which you've loosened, bring it down or up. If it's too low, you bring it up. If it's too high, you bring it down. And by eye, you measure to make sure that it is meeting at a clean point. Something you can do as well to make sure that it actually isn't overlapping is run your finger over the top. If it catches, then you know that the front blade is too high. So I'm running my finger over the top right here and this is smooth, this is nice. So I'm gonna tighten that there. Then you move to the other side. Loosen it just a little bit and the same thing. By eye, you're measuring it to make sure that it's meeting at a clean point. And when you look at it and you feel like, okay, that's a clean point, you run your finger over it, it's not catching your finger at all. And I'm looking at it right now myself and saying, yeah, that looks level, that looks even. And because I've only loosened it just a little bit, it's friction, so it's holding its place. It's very important that you loosen it only a little bit so there is friction. If you loosen it too much, then it'll just be moving up and down all over the place. And when you find the right position, by the time you go to tighten it, it would have moved out. Make sure guys, that when you loosen your blades, you only loosen the screw ever so slightly. There has to be friction, because if you loosen it too much, your blades will be moving up and down all over the place. And even when you find the right position, by the time you go to tighten it, it will move again. So make sure there is some friction so that when you find the right position, it will hold that place. And all you got to do is tighten it a little bit. Very important. So I have found the right position and I'm just tightening it now. And I'm looking at it by eye and I can see that it's level. Running my finger over it and it feels level. But the test is this. Get your clipper, clip the blade on. Make sure at this point, this goes into where the screws will go into. Now this is a time saver. Put your fingers where the screws would be and hold it tight, like it's screwed in. Switch it on, and you have to become your own guinea pig. Either here, or on the side of your arm. Guys, please make sure when you're testing it on yourself, you're doing it in a position that is not harmful. Don't do it across your veins. Like I've seen barbers where they go to test it and they're doing this. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? Don't do it there. Do it like here. Do it on the side. Do it, you can even do it on your arm if you want to, but you just want to test how sharp it is. So this feels very nice. This is like, this is nice. And if you notice, I put it on both sides. That side, that side. Because sometimes it could be, one side could be a little bit higher, a little bit too sharp. So you need to make sure that when you press down, press down one side, press down the other side, press down together and make sure that you don't use your clients as the guinea pig. You have to be the guinea pig. So if you cut yourself, then that's all good. Do you know why? Because that could have been a client you cut. 
The reason why I do this technique of holding onto it because if you screw it in and then you find out that one side's too sharp, the other side's not sharp enough, it's not sharp at all, then you're gonna have to unscrew it again and then readjust it. So this way it saves time so that if this was wrong, I would just simply take it off, adjust it again and do the same thing. But I've been doing this for years, so I got it right first time. <laughs> Another thing to do guys, especially if you're not professional and you don't know how it's supposed to feel, if it's sharp, if it's smooth, is to use it on yourself. So this might require you having to screw the screws in, but if you're confident enough, you can. Hold your fingers where the screw should be, switch it on, and then try it on your hair. Cuts nice. And if you try it on yourself, just do a little piece. Like don't try and give yourself a full haircut, just like a little piece. I cut the front part and that cut nice, it felt good. And it's good as well, because that's what the clients are gonna be feeling. So once you're happy with it, then put the screws back in. These screws are very fiddly. <laughs> If you see guys, look at my left hand, I'm holding down on the blade because if I don't hold down on it while I'm, I'm screwing, it, screwing it in, it can bounce up. But now I screwed one in, it's stable, it's in. It's firm, it's solid. That is tight, make sure it's tight and don't overdo it because you can also crack the clippers but if you kind of like <clears throat> don't do all of that, just make sure it's firm, it's tight, yep. Yep, all good. And that is how you adjust the blades of a wall detailer. Now, as I said, once you learn how to adjust one of the shape up clippers in the wall selection, you know how to shape them, not shape them, you know how to adjust them all. <laughs> now that's done, unless you guys wanna see me shape myself up. I don't think the cameraman cares about that. All right, cool, we'll move on. You lose. Now, how to adjust the blades on your wall Senior. Quick shout out to King's Clipper, King's underscore Clipper, for the customized clipper. Slider cuts and depth. Very nice. As I said with the wall detailer, once you know how to adjust the blades on them, you can adjust any of the shape up clippers on the wall selection. It's exactly the same when it comes to the wall senior. Once you know how to adjust the blades on these, you can do the wall. I'm senior with the cord. You can do the wall super taper, the wall magic clip, any of the wall clippers which are for cutting hair. It's exactly the same method to adjust the blades. Let's get into it. Now, when you're adjusting these clippers, it's a lot more simple than the wall detailer because it hasn't got two different sections. With the detailers, you unscrew the back here, you take off the blade, then there's screws inside. With the wall senior, it's only these two screws. You loosen these two screws and you adjust the blades from there. So it means it makes it a lot more simple and quicker. As I always say, when you loosen the blades, you only wanna loosen it very slightly, like between 20 and 45 degrees. Um, if you don't understand your degrees, you know, then it's literally, whoa, this is tight. Wasn't expecting that, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Literally, look how far I can, I don't know if you can see it clearly in the camera. Look how far I'm gonna loosen it, that much. These are tight, so I need to kind of just, whoa, there we go. Yeah, there we go. On this side, guys, literally, slightly. Ever so slightly. If you see, I've moved it ever so slightly, and now it's all moving. Can you see clearly? The front blade here, is lower than the back blade. So all you have to do is lift you with your hands and if you can see there's friction and this is what you want, you want friction. So then when I move it into a position, it stays there. If I do that, it stays there. Look at me hitting it. It's not moving. That's the friction you want. So you move it to where you want it. Look at it. Run your finger over it, smooth. Right now, 
I'm running my finger over this and it's catching, which tells me that it's not meeting at a point because it should not be catching my finger. So that means I move it down a little bit more. Still catching, move it down a little bit more. And this is what's important about having the friction because the friction allows you just to adjust it a little bit. And okay, I'm like, okay, that's nice. One side done. Tighten that side. The other side is still moving. Can you see that? Because I haven't tightened the other side. And I'm, I'm doing this by eye. Running my finger over it, that feels nice. No, no, it doesn't actually. I'm lying. That's catching my finger. Now that feels nice. Then you tighten the other side. And like I always say, the best way to test your clippers is on yourself. Do not make your clients the guinea pig. Make sure you have tested the clippers on yourself before you put it on a client. Because if it's too sharp and it cuts the client, that's not really fair or nice. Make sure you're your own guinea pig. Now with these clippers, what we're saying, these clippers here, I'll say to you, with this big blade, when they're sharp, they're really, really sharp. That's why it's important for you to test it on yourself. And make sure, make, 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 make sure you do it on an area that's not the most sensitive or like around your veins or anything like that. Oh yeah, that's nice. I can feel the sharpness. And another piece of advice, guys, before you test it on yourself, please, 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 please be light-handed. Do not go at your hand aggressively. Make sure you're just going to touch and move straight away. Because if it is really sharp, then you're going to cut yourself badly. So make sure you go to go and move out straight away and you can feel it. And then if it feels soft, then you can kind of apply pressure more. Okay, that's all right. So now I can apply a bit more pressure because I feel it, it's okay. But make sure when you start, make, make sure when you start, you're gonna go in it. You're gonna go in very softly, like a feather. Like a, sever, like a feather, very softly. <laughs> like with the detailer, you could also do the technique of getting the clippers, putting it on a flat surface, and adjusting it that way, exactly the same way. But I always say, after you do that, I always find that you will always still have to come to the clipper and still look at it and adjust it, adjust one side, adjust the other side and test it. It's very important that would you call it, that you don't just think, oh, because you've got a flat surface, it means that you have got a perfectly aligned blade. You still check it, still test it. And if it works out, then you have got great zero gap aligned blades. I keep saying clippers, right? But guys, when I say clippers, I mean the blades. You know what I'm saying? When I say clippers, I mean the blades. Aligned blades, aligned blades, aligned clippers, aligned blades. You know what I'm saying? So that is how I zero gap my clippers. Now understand this as well, guys. You do not have to zero gap your clippers. When you're adjusting them, you can make it that the blades are slightly apart because you don't want it that sharp. That is fine, that is your prerogative, that is down to you. But make sure this, never have these front blades above the back blade. Never, that is a no-no, that is not preference, that is wrong. That will just cut clients. If anything, the back blades should always be higher than the front blades, never the reverse. The front blades should never, ever, 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 I'm stressing it, be higher than the back blades. That will cut clients. So if you're one of the people who are like, I don't want my clippers that sharp, so I want my clippers, the blades to be slightly apart, that is fine. But make sure that is the front blade here that is lower than the back blade. Comprehende? What? Comprehende? Yeah. Or comprende? Hey! Comprende, bro. Com hey! Don't correct me. You mad. He said comprende. Hey, that's a comprende. <laughs> so if you're someone who doesn't want to zero gap their clippers, that is fine. 
you can adjust it to wherever you like. But I'm just showing you how I zero gap my clippers because so many of you have asked me how do you zero gap your clippers and how do you get your clippers so sharp. But it's down to your preference whether you do it zero gap, 0 0.5 gap, whatever it is. But there's my advice on how to zero gap your blades. Thank you for tuning into my video. If you feel this video has been helpful to you and it would be helpful for someone else, then please leave a comment letting me know why it's been helpful and send the video to someone else. And don't forget to leave a like and click that subscribe button. You've been in a cut with slider cuts, although I actually haven't been cutting hair. But whenever you're with me, you're in the cut. Yeah, and it's slider cuts. Come on, come on. S to the L to the I to the D to the E to the R to the cut. Somebody doing all right.